The UK could eventually blink first in the bitter trade talks with the European Union because the Brussels bloc will be able to absorb the devastating impact of a no-deal Brexit much better than Britain. The EU's chief Brexit negotiator Michel Barnier met UK counterpart David Frost in London on Tuesday for emergency talks outside the official round of negotiations in a desperate attempt to break the deadlock in post-Brexit trade talks. But he launched another scathing attack against Britain just 24 hours later, demanding the UK give some ground on several crucial red lines, predominantly fishing access and state aid, while also sarcastically wishing London good luck with surviving a no-deal Brexit. Speaking at the Dublin-based Institute of International and European Affairs, Mr Barnier, who has set a deadline of October 31 for a deal to be agreed, accused the UK of not compromising over fishing rights and warned unless negotiators shift their position, there would be no deal with the European Union. Tensions between the two negotiating teams intensified on Tuesday when Downing Street blamed Brussels for the lack of progress in trade talks after last week's latest round of negotiations. The eighth round of talks begins in London next week. Tim Bale, Deputy Director at the UK in a Changing Europe think tank and politics professor at Queen Mary University of London, warned while both sides will wait for the other to blink as the clock ticks down to a no-deal Brexit, the UK could be forced to make its move first. He said Britain is not in a position to be able to absorb the impact of a no-deal Brexit like the EU would be able to, due to an immediate shortage in supplies across a number of lucrative sectors and industries. Professor Bale told Express, it looks very like the talks will go to the wire, both sides seem convinced that by not budging they can make the other blink at the last minute. The EU might compromise on fishing since it's not a massive economic issue, although the politics are tricky. The UK will almost certainly have to compromise on state aid, by agreeing on some sort of independent enforcement mechanism that will prevent British governments subsidising firms selling into EU markets. If last year's negotiations on the withdrawal agreement are anything to go by, it will bait a UK. Either side could walk away but a no-deal exit from transition would be much more of a hit to the UK than to the EU, and, by all accounts, the EU is better prepared for that contingency.